In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As sinners, we come before one another and before God, and we ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And please be seated for our first reading. reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they had turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response is from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, I lift my soul. To you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them. Those weeping as not weeping. Those rejoicing as not rejoicing. Those buying as not owning. Those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fittingly proclaim his gospel. Amen. Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Since the last couple of decades of the 20th century, many young children learned the classic Bible stories from watching a program on TV called Veggie Tales. How many of you remember Veggie Tales? 
Oh my gosh, Veggie Tales, yes. So all the classical stories like Jonah, but several others also were done in this rather whimsical format in which the main characters were cucumbers or tomatoes or broccoli or what have you. But it was, it was the same little parable, the same story, only making it kind of more palatable for the younger set. So I remember many of those. Jonah was, of course, the reluctant prophet. He didn't want to go. And uh, the Lord kept you know, telling him that he had to go to Nineveh. And the people of Nineveh, according to the story, were very cruel and evil. And he was afraid of what would happen to him when he got there. And so um, instead of going to Nineveh, which would have been across the desert, he went down to Joppa and got a place on a boat heading to Tarshish in the opposite direction. Most of us know the story. The, uh, there was a big storm and the sailors cast lots to see who was responsible for it and the lot fell on Jonah who they said was trying to run away from the Lord. And so they tossed him overboard and the scripture tells us that a large fish swallowed him and then he uh, the fish swam off the coast maybe 50 miles away from Nineveh and on a big cherry pick cherry pit, pit spitting contest uh, was able to get the championship and spit Jonah all the way up to Nineveh where when he went there um, there was a conversion there was a change of heart of the people of Nineveh in the story and believe it or not Jonah wasn't happy about that because it didn't fulfill it showed that his prophecy wasn't working because nothing bad happened to those folks so that shows how very uh, much of a small man that Jonah really was of course, we had the calling in, the, in today's gospel of the of the uh, disciples, Peter and Andrew, were uh, mending or casting their nets in the sea. James and John were uh, mending the tares in their nets, and they were apostles, and they followed Jesus, and for the most part, were 100% faithful to him. Their whole lives were upended or changed by their experience of Jesus. One of my favorite stories of the life of Christ is the 1990s some uh, version by Franco Zeffirelli called Jesus of Nazareth. And I remember a scene in that relates to the change. The disciples are all sitting around the campfire talking about their experience being called by Jesus. And they said, you know, our life will never be the same again. It's totally upended. You know, we, were, we, we won't be going to parties again. We won't be just doing fishing. We won't be doing this, that, and the other. Instead, we have no idea what's going to happen. So there is a tremendous change, a metanoia, as in the Greek term, a change in the life. 1 Corinthians, Paul tells the people of Corinth, um, the world as we know it is passing away. Goodness sakes, all we have to do is read newspapers or hear announcements, and we know many things that we counted on as part of like our regular year uh, are not going to be there, being readjusted, replanned. Uh, later on, after after the communion of the Mass, you'll hear about some changes in the Shigala as it goes goes virtual. It's still our big fundraiser for our, our academy, but it can't be done in large crowds. We can't have the dinner. And so we, we have to adjust to this these things. The only one that's permanent, of course, is God. And may this these changes in our world and these pandemics and all the things that happen, may they at least bring us to more faith in God because God is unchangeable God always loves us God always does things for our good and so he is our unchangeable unshakable rock
please stand. We profess our faith by reciting together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. We bring our prayers, needs, and intentions to the Lord today. For all religious leaders, that they may guide the hearts of the faithful to everlasting life through the sacrament of reconciliation and forgiveness of sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our world leaders may receive guidance from the Holy Spirit so that they can create policies that foster justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may be willing to leave behind any sinful ways that keep us separated from union with God, others, and ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died serving the human family during this COVID-19 virus may receive their heavenly reward of their labors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us be the voice of Jesus in the world today, speaking his healing words to all whom we meet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we conclude with the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the malice and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our song during the preparation of gifts is Christ Be Our Light. Light for the 
My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed, which has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you've called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they might become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please offer your other side of God's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. And please remain standing for announcements. Shigala raffle tickets will be sold in the vestibule after Mass today, and this is the last weekend for those $100 tickets for that very large prize. There will be a local March for Life next Sunday, the 30th, beginning at 11 a.m. This march will start from our church, no, Saturday, I'm sorry, it's Saturday the 30th. This march will start from our church parking lot. More details are available in this week's bulletin. Wendy Endress and Connie McCann will now speak about Shigela, and it's Shigela with a twist, of course, so please listen. Thank you. Be seated. Good morning. For those that don't know me, my name is Wendy Endries. I have aunts and uncles who graduated from Sacred Heart Academy, my siblings, cousins, and I graduated from Sacred Heart too. My two sons, James and Joseph, are currently enrolled at the Academy. Catholic education is a tradition in our family. It is also a tradition of excellence. Catholic education teaches morals and values which youth need today so they can make the world a better place. High academic standards, hands-on education, and service learning are also hallmarks of our school. 
As a parent and a graduate, I can tell you there is no better choice for a child's education than Sacred Heart Academy. Enrollment is up and our parish can be very proud of the support they have given to the Academy. It is appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. She is the amazing chairperson of our Shigala committee and working very hard for us. Thank you. And for anyone who might not know me, if there is anyone, I'm Connie McCann, your development director. Our Shigala event, our biggest fundraiser, has a twist this year, hence we're calling it Shigala with a twist. We cannot gather as we typically would to have the celebration in our gymnasium and display all of our items. So we're taking the entire show online. We are virtual. Being virtual allows, uh, allows even more people to be involved. You can bid on items and you can play the games of chance and see what's out there. This parish has supported the Academy for 131 years and for 26 Shigalas. <laughs> we hope that you will continue and help us make the 27th annual Shigala just as successful. There are many ways you can help. You can purchase a cash raffle ticket. There are sellers in the lobby now, as Father said. Register for the online auctions using the link in the bulletin, or you could make a donation to the teachers and help us reach the $50,000 challenge issued by the Fabiano family. If you have questions, call the parish office and we will help you. Since this is all new, we, we are here to help. We would also appreciate your prayers for a successful event. By the grace of God and with your support, Shigela with a twist could be our best year ever. Thank you so much. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, Father and His Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is Sing a New Song. Oh, cheers. 